Welcome to Curie Electronics. Today we are going to study about thermocouple. This thermocouple is a temperature sensor. Temperature is thermocouple. It's a temperature sensor. How it is made up of? It is made up of two different metals. This green color and blue color indicates two different metals. And this is the junction of these two metals. So this junction, so we have two metals, let me mark it as metal A and metal B. Metal A. metal B. So to make a thermocouple two different metals are joined together and at this junction the metal joint junction using this junction using this junction this joint junction we will measure the temperature of a body or a liquid wherever we want to make the measurement we can make using this junction now what happens how does this thermocouple can used for temperature measurement when there is a temperature difference between these two junctions also we can name it uh, this is the measuring junction measuring junction or we can say it's a hot junction or we can say it's a sensing element so this this junction is the measuring junction or hot junction or sensing element then in the other the other 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 end of these two these two metals is known as the reference junction then see these two junctions are known as the reference junction so what uh, let me write it here these two reference junction okay these two a reference junction reference junction so so one is the hot junction and another is the reference junction reference junction or we can say it as cold junction also so whenever there is a temperature difference between the hot junction that is this is also known as or hot junction hot junction or measuring junction and the reference junction or cold junction there will be emf produ emf will be produced across this reference junctions so that emf we will calibrate to temperature so we can make so we can make temperature measurements using this thermocouple so what do we do we will connect these two junction uh, metal ends to a voltmeter so the so corresponding to temperature we will get a voltmeter reading usually it is millivolt meter and uh, this is the hot junction hot hot body so our this point 
that is the junction of both the metals will be touching the body to be measured which body temperature we have to measure it will be touching the body this uh, this is uh, this the generation of emf when two metal junctions are there and and these junctions undergoes different temperature are under different temperature emf is produced this effect is known as seebeck effect seebeck effect now let me write some notes for you so what is thermoelectric effect then you have to write when a metal when a pair of wires made up made of different metals a and b is joined together at one end a temperature difference between that end and that is the joined end and other end of the wires produces voltage between the wires that is known as contact potential or thermo emf so that is how emf is generated then you have to write okay the use of thermal emf as a measure of temperature is known as thermocouple thermocouple thermometry thermocouple thermometry this thermo emf generated as how we have seen and that effect is known as seebeck effect so how what 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 is the effect of thermocouple which causes thermo emf that is the seebeck effect that process is known as the, that effect is known as seebeck effect now see when there is a temperature between temperature difference between the junction of the metal and the other end of the metal thermo emf is generated so can you think what happens if if we apply emf to both the ends of the junction what happens to the junction obviously there is a reverse process and just opposed to seebeck effect and that is known as the peltier effect so what is peltier effect so the process which is just opposite of seebeck effect is known as peltier effect peltier effect so we have we have a same Con configuration like thermocouple these two colors indicates two different metals we have the junction now what we do we apply a voltage across these two these two metals junction metals metal junctions 
now what happens at this junction what temperature heat may be produced produce or or it could absorb heat that means that junction act like a cooling body cooling produce or absorb and this is known as peltier effect when a current is allowed to flow through the junction heat is either generated or absorbed depending on the direction of current so when we when you know about feedback effect you should know about peltier effect also now we have rtd we have different uh, temperature sensors why do we use this thermocouple range of temperature of thermocouple so a thermocouple can be used to measure temperature from what range to what range it is from minus 2 to 70 degrees celsius to 2700 degree celsius or you can say it in fahrenheit also minus 418 degree fahrenheit to 5000 degree fahrenheit so i i always remember it in degree celsius that is minus 270 degree celsius to 5000 uh, 2700 degree celsius now what are the properties a thermocouple material should have right is all metals we can't use it it should have some properties okay and the temperature emf relation should be reasonably linear thermocouple is not a linear device linear sensor but it should be reasonably linear to use it and it should be reproducible again and again we should get the same value when you make the same temperature measurement the second property is adequate thermo emf per degree of temperature to facilitate detection and measurement that means with every 1 degree rise in temperature there should be a reasonable amount of rise in the thermo emf generated then only we can calibrate properly And the third property of the material is the material should be strong enough to withstand high temperatures so we may use this thermocouple in a furnace and rapid temperature changes and effect of corrosive atmosphere in some processes there will be immediate high temperature and low temperature then in the it is we use it in the liquid also so it should not get corroded corro corrosive property should not be there for this whichever metal or alloy we choose to make thermocouple the fourth property is the thermocouple should maintain its calibration without drift over a long time so when you purchase a thermocouple it will be calibrated so it should remain in that calibration for a long time without drift and finally what is the final point the thermocouple should have long life and less cost so these are these are the main properties of thermocouple materials now we will see some of the combination of metals used for thermocouple useful range then max range
So first we will consider copper constant and copper and constant n. What is the temperature this this thermocouple can measure, which is made up of copper and constant n? That is minus two hundred degree Celsius to is all degree Celsius. Minus two hundred degree Celsius to three hundred degree Celsius, and the maximum it can go. Sorry, it can go up to three fifty. This is a useful range. That is a reliable range, but it can be used to to measure maximum of six hundred degree Celsius. Then we have iron, iron constant n. These are metals, okay? Iron constant n. That is from minus two hundred to seven fifty degree Celsius. Already mentioned. So, what is the max this iron constant n thermocouple can measure? That is south thousand degree Celsius. Uh, we'll see one more combination or two more combination max. Then we have. Chromal alumal, both are alloys. Using that, we are making a thermocouple. Chromal alumal, and it has got. This also starts from minus two hundred to thousand two hundred degrees Celsius. The maximum value is thousand four fifty. Ah, uh, let's see one more. That is the platinum and platinum rhodium. Platinum and platinum rhodium. And it can measure from it can measure from four hundred degrees four hundred to thousand four fifty. That is the Useful range, but it can measure up to. Let me correct it. Thousand seven hundred degrees Celsius. So, we should know the some basic at least copper constant and and iron constant and and what is their range. What are the advantages of this thermocouple? Advantages of thermocouple. These thermocouples are very rugged. It won't get easily da damaged. So, the, so it is easy to handle. It's not a delicate thing. That is what thermocouples have rugged construction. The second advantage of this thermocouple is the sensing element of the thermocouple can be easily installed. That means we have a junction like a tip, a tip, a tip of a pen. We can say as a tip of a pen. Then wherever we want, there we can make the measurement. That is why it is said the sensing element of thermocouple can be easily installed. So installation is easy. And third is the range. What is the range? Minus two seventy degrees Celsius to two thousand seven hundred degrees Celsius. Okay. The fourth point is thermocouples offer good reproducibility. That means 
it can measure us again and again the same temperature with accuracy that is what reproducibility okay and the the one of the last advantage there are many other advantages also not writing all a brit circuit is not needed for temperature measurement usually wherever we make the measurement we use the brit circuit but here in this case of thermocouples this brit circuit is not required now all of you know if there is advantage there is also disadvantage disadvantages let's see what are the disadvantages of thermocouple disadvantages of thermocouple see whenever we use this thermocouples most of the times we need a amplifier to amplify the whatever the signal we get from the thermocouple it is in millivolt so that in many applications signal need to be amplified so if we use a thermocouple we are in need of amplifier we have seen this thermocouple is not linear thermocouple exhibit non linearity in emf versus temperature characteristic so it's a non linear device that's also a advantage not advantage say disadvantage and uh, this uh, this thermocouples have lower accuracy that means the whatever temperature it reads it may it may not be the exact value and so because of that this can be used for precision work precision work means if we are work doing any r and d where we need a higher high accuracy then we cannot use this thermocouple and Uh, finally we have one more disadvantage so whenever we have to prevent the corrosion of the thermocouple for that we have to use different methods uh, we have to put it in a tube it should be air sealed like that many things we have to do so that is also difficulty but still uh, we have come by to disadvantages advantages are many for many applications so we use this thermocouple main uh, in uh, industry is very popular uh, this thermocouple so you can get the notes from the link in the description if you like the video please share with your friends and don't forget to hit the like button